I think uh, two very important questions. First, about Afghan parliament, the corruption in Afghan parliament. Uh, I would like to say, Afghan parliament, it is the first parliament in the world, in the world, that work three, three hours a day. They arrived about nine o'clock and finished about half past twelve o'clock. Afghan parliament, it is the only parliament in the world that they work only four days in the week. Afghan parliament, it is the only parliament that more than 100 MP never come in parliament except the day of salary. Unfortunately, there is more corruption in Afghan parliament than in Afghan government. Unfortunately. So about the second uh, question, in my analysis, Hikmatyar or Mullah Omar Aqani, he said, I'm a part of Taliban. So Hikmatyar is in power in Afghanistan. The big commander of Hikmatyar, they are governor, they are minister, <laughs> they are the chief of office of Karzai. And all, practically all advisor, all former advisor of Taliban, they are in power now in Afghanistan. As minister, as deputy, as minister, as MP. So it is the reason that in my analyze they Men of king, the men, man, uh, the man of uh, doubt, the man of communist period, the man of Mujahideen and Taliban, now they share the power, they have the power together. And it is the reason that I said we must finish with this kind of man that they are in love with power. They are in love with power. A day, a day I received a call from American embassy for a dinner. I refused to go in the embassy. I asked who is the other guest. They give me the name of some big commander that they had dinner in the Soviet Union embassy in the past time. Now they go and have had dinner in the American embassy. So I think we must finish with the political party involved in the war in Afghanistan. When an Afghan killed one Afghan innocent, he is Pashto, he is Tajik, he is Uzbek, he is Khalqi, he is Parchami, he is Arakati, he is Wahdati, he is Tariqi Taliban, he is Jamati. He cannot, he cannot be a good minister or a president or MP for Afghan people. It is time to finish with the old, old politician that they works for himself and did a lot of bad things against Afghan ordinary people. It is the only way that we give by election a new to a new generation of power. International community, unfortunately, in my opinion, international community, as I say, they are in Afghanistan, not in my opinion, not to support Afghan people's desire, not to respect human rights values, not to give a chance to a new generation in power, not to, to give chance to Afghan women to be in, in politics, for example. 
And it is the principal problem in Afghanistan because it is a disaster first for international community and for this new community. They said we are for human rights, for democracy. We are in Afghanistan to help Afghan people. In fact, it's not the case. So it is time to finish with all of corrupt politicians, killer politicians, uh, politicians that he worked for himself in the name of ethnic. If a Pashtun leader worked for Pashtun, and Hazara worked for Hazara, Tajik for Tajik, Uzbek for Uzbek, now Afghanistan people must have a, a quiet life. But all chief in Afghanistan in the name of Hazara or Tajik or Pashtun or Uzbek or Islam or Shia or Sunni, unfortunately they work for their power or their pocket. And I hope to finish with this old generation of politicians in Afghanistan. Thank you very much. While we are waiting for, for the next uh, question, I want to ask you, we know that you live very simple. You live in a tent most of the year, and then sometimes when it's very cold in Kabul, you go home to your parents to live in a small room. You make all the, uh, you make all the cooking and the washing yourself. And somebody call you Afghanistan's Gandhi. Uh, where do you get your inspiration? Do you have any any Afghan examples in history or what inspires you to, to live in this way, struggle in this way? When I left Afghanistan, I was very young and I had a lot of problems, sometimes without money, sometimes without something to eat. So I think it, it was the first time that I understand a man or a woman that he or she is poor, without money, without uh, some other element. And after I read uh, the books uh, about Gandhi, about Martin Luther King, for example, about Mandela, uh, but it's Afghan people, I think they are very, this people is very kind. Uh, with me, uh, support me, and uh, I can say the large majority of Afghan people love me, and it is a reason also I try to be, to have a life as Afghan ordinary people. I give 80% of my salary to poor people. I have also a foundation called Bashar Dostan Foundation, Humanist Foundation. I received by Afghan ordinary people uh, in European country, in United States, in other country, 100, 500, uh, or 1,000 dollars. I go myself in the tent of poor people, in the house of poor people. I give in my hand this money. I make DVD, I send to the donor, and I publish in the website the name of donor. So one thing that I would like to see also, the Afghan ordinary people doesn't trust in Afghanistan in other person. Uh, I hope that the international community uh, take also another decision. I know some American people, French, Swedish people, they give a lot of money to some injured, but they do know a lot of this money go in the pocket of some corrupt person in Afghanistan. So I hope that a day my foundation can do more things for Afghan people with the help not only Afghan diaspora migration <coughs> and, but, uh, but also with other people in the world that they want to help Afghan ordinary people. I want to say also Afghan people in Sweden they have some young people, a lot of problems. I think it is time that Swedish people respect its own values in Sweden. When your policemen do some violence against the Afghan that he is in your country without passport, 
I think it is not human right. I think it is also a part of human right to help a young Afghan if he respect or she respect your values, your law, to be in your country. Uh, an Afghan said to me yesterday that uh, in the airport, the Swedish policeman uh, did a lot of violence against the Afghan woman that she was uh, ill. It is time that you started to protest in your country. You have right to go to, to say to an Afghan go out, but you have not right to use the violence against a woman. If Swedish police policemen use the violence against a woman in Sweden, what we can wait of a warlord in Afghanistan? Or how we can criticize? It is the reason that in Afghan parliament. In Afghanistan, when I talk with Afghan warlord, they say to me, Mr. Bashar Dost, we do eat in Afghanistan, but they do also. They give me some example in the United States against human rights, Guantanamo, for example. Or they give me the, some example against human rights in your country. When an Afghan warlord hear in radio or TV that a Swedish policeman used the force, the violence against the Afghan woman, illegal. Yes, absolutely illegal. But if this warlord here in TV, we cannot speak about Swedish people that these people love human rights. I hope that you try to do something here in your country for Afghan and especially young generation that are in, in your country and they need help. You can help. He is a human. If we want human rights values, if we, have, if we want human rights values in other country, not in our own country, it is another thing. Thank you very much. So, uh, talking both about inspiration and the uh, young generation, uh, what would you say to a young man or woman from Sweden planning to go as a soldier to, to Afghanistan? I think the problem with international community soldier, it is not why the soldier is in Afghanistan. But the problem, it, it is where is the soldier? With, with who is the soldier? In which side the soldier is? Unfortunately, until today, the international community soldier, as Swedish soldier, they are in the bad side. Not in the side of Afghan people. And as I said, they keep the security of a warlord as commander of as governor or, or minister or MP or vice president. And I'm absolutely sure that we can stop the war in Afghanistan. We don't need your, the international community to be in Afghanistan. We have a new generation in power. When we finished with the chief of Taliban, the chief of communists, the chief of uh, Mujahideen, the member of king period uh, government, and it will be a, a good news for your soldier. And I think it is the so international community soldier duty to protect the victim of warlord and not the warlord. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, now I'm sorry to say that we have to, to close this meeting. And I, will, I would like to take the opportunity to, to convey to you our warm thanks for coming to Sweden. We know you have a very busy schedule, but, and you have refused all visits abroad seven years. Only when you got the invitation from our organization, you, you agreed, because that was not a state invitation. 
So you prefer talking to the, to the common people. I think that's a, a, a very uh, nice attitude. Uh, and, and we are very grateful that you took the time to come here. And you have had meetings in Uppsala, in Gothenburg, you have met Afghanis everywhere you have went. And now you are going on to Germany for a very tight schedule. I've seen it, many meetings there, and, and uh, maybe you go on to Netherlands and other countries in Europe. We wish you all luck on your tour to Europe, and we hope you, you will be able to see some results in the future. It would, I think it would be possible to, to open some kind of uh, possibility in Sweden to send money to your fund uh, in order to help you and in order to cut the overhead costs of the no good organizations. Okay, thank you very much and a warm applause to Mr. Bashar Thank you very much.